Yo, what's up YouTube? It's Friday, 3rd of March, and got the two bits of wood done. I know it looks crap, but we're just gonna try it. If it doesn't work, it will come straight down and they can be gone. And the other thing is, got some WD-40 to give the chain a good squirt, and those links. And then we've got those links there, which got dropped in the mud, so they might as well have a spray. While I'm on the subject, I often get asked why I don't use push bike gears. Uh, and the fact is, they're just not good enough. If you look at this, that is over six mil thick. I think it's quarter of an inch. And same with that. And this chain, bicycle chain just isn't good enough. If you've got a low powered one, it probably is. But this chain, it has a half inch pitch. That's the way it works. So I'm not an expert on that, but that measurement is half an inch. If I get my calipers, I'll show you. Yo, we've got some better light on the situation. That's the original chain off the turbine. They're the two new links that I've bought, which I'm gonna use, and there's the old link. Uh, and this is the other bit of chain. So I'm gonna use this as the main bit, because it's in slightly better condition. And then we'll, we need to work out exactly how much we need to add from this. Uh, to give us enough chain to get from there all the way down to where the motor is. Now you will notice, uh, I did say in my previous video, I have actually got this so we can move this gear forward because when I want to use the big gear, this little gear will have to be here and before it was interfering and now it won't be. I know the wood looks crap, I may paint it black, but just to let you know, that's the first thing. Uh, then I need to cut the bolts, make some bolts to go through because they're, they're obviously <clears throat> bolts like that are too short. They would have been long enough, but now they're too short. So yeah, quite a few bits to do. So I best crack on. Hey, what's up YouTube? This is just a quick video to show you this separately, especially my regular subscribers. Just wanted to show you the wear on the drive shaft from the bearings. Not so bad there, but you can still see it a little bit. And that's the rear one. That's the rear one. So this one is the worst. What I've decided to do is to move this bearing onto here where for some reason I'd already had holes it was here. So it's gonna be back here. Uh, not 100% sure how that'll work, but it should be fine. So yeah, I just wanted to show you that as a separate video. I thought you'd find that interesting, especially this one. Sweet. Hey, what's up YouTube? This is just a quick video to show you this separately, especially my regular subscribers. Just wanted to show you the wear on the drive shaft from the bearings. Not so bad there, but you can still see it a little bit. That's the rear one. So this one is the worst. What I've decided to do is to move this bearing onto here, where for some reason I'd already had holes it was here. So it's gonna be back here. Uh, not 100% sure how that'll work, but it should be fine. So yeah, I just wanted to show you that as a separate video. I thought you'd find that interesting, especially this one. Sweet. This is the uh, voltage cutoff thing that I bought and I've actually taken out this case because of the horrendous plastic connectors that it had. So yeah, that will be hopefully seen in a future video very soon. Sweet. Also, I've just been to tool station, uh, loads of nuts, 20 washers and some M12 threaded bar, one meter. Sweet. Yo, what's up YouTube? It's Saturday the 4th of March and I just want to show you the progress I've made. These uh, blocks don't look great, I can appreciate that, uh, but they're going to do the job. I had to do some grinding here to get this flat where the tail goes on and I also had to make sure there was a space here and a space here and a space here to do that nut. So you can see that bit has ended up in the middle. It's going to be uh, when we want to use this cog, it'll be set up like this. And when we want to use this cog, it'll just be shifted over and the cog will be bolted down to the frame. I've got the motor in there, so uh, you can see it's just on, so it needs shuffling over this way and all this needs tightening up. Uh, but we've got it in place, so now we're gonna uh, sort out this bit of chain 
that I was saying about. And yeah, we're gonna crack on with that. Sweet. So this is the bit of chain, sorry, a bit croaky there. This is the bit of chain we're gonna make up for the smaller cog. That's how it's gonna be. Okay, and there's how many links we need to add in to the chain to make the big job. Sweet. So this is the bit of chain that I've crudely hacked open and you can see uh, I need to knock this pin out and then we'll have one joiner here and then one here. Sweet. So that's all we needed extra. That doesn't seem right, does it? But it's only that little bit when the cog's a lot bigger. I can't get my head around that. But anyway, that's what it is. Sweet. So my friends, this is how it's ended up for now with the motor in there. And it's all about how easily you can turn it by hand. That's quite hard, but it's going to be because the ratio now is 1.85 to one. We've got a 37 tooth to a 20 or we've got a 28 to a 20. It was a bit of a mission with the chain. We've ended up with a one more link than we have to, but I've got it so that it can be moved. The chain can be shortened and put on here quite easily. And then this will slide into that position and this can slide backwards out of the way. That was the only way I could do it, i.e. the blocks. And you can see we've got clearance on there. So that's essentially all of the work I needed to do done. Uh, and it's going to be a day or two till we can get it on the tower and then because it has to go it has to be moved onto the tower in one piece I don't want to be taking it out and messing around with it So yeah, that's it for now But this will be flying very soon and it will need a good bit of wind to get it going sweet